Hello everyone, welcome to Lawrence Plays, and because it's Friday we're going to be talking about Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And as ever the channel is sponsored by Trefoil.be, so if you go to Trefoil.be slash Lawrence Plays and use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout, you'll get your first month free from them and free for your game server hosting, and I'll talk about them a little bit more later on. So today I'm going to start off by talking about what Tristan's been up to first, because he's had the most exciting... Um, report from last week I think so as you might be able to tell by looking at this um, the, the, the view here he's gone off to a different planet uh, and this is a cryonite planet so this is um, Dak Drakit which as you can see it, it's a moon of Norvis so it's quite nearby in fact if I go over to the uh, universe view you can see that he's gone all the way from Norvis to Drakit which isn't very far so he's, he's, he's sticking fairly close by but interestingly despite being so close to the sun as in we're, as in uh, in orbit in, in orbit round Norvis, which is the second closest planet to the sun. Despite that, it's still got quite a lot of cryonite and it's very very snowy. So maybe there's some sort of horrific nuclear winter that makes it colder than normal. There. I don't know, but that does mean this is a good place to go out and start getting resources from. So we've got lots and lots of cryonite and then little bits of other things as well in the sort of the, the sort of the proportions you typically expect. The good news about this planet is at least when he started it was a seven it was a mere seven percent threat. So he's been able to go around it quite quickly with sort of fairly normal weapons and bring that down to zero percent threat. And that means we've been able to do confirm hostile extinction, and that means that the game now knows that this is a completely biter free planet and we don't and isn't going to spend time worrying about whether to process biter movements on it, whether to try and spawn new ones in, because there aren't any here, so it's going to be fine. It's a frozen planet, but there are puddles on it, and that means um, that means he's going to be okay for power because there's a nice big lake up here. We've made a decision. That apparently, there's a, a potential glitch in, uh, in Crast with Crastorio 2 that may lead to planets that shouldn't have any water at all having a small lake in the middle as a sort of, because as part of the sort of the what you get normally when you're starting to form a planet. So we've made an agreement that when we go out to a planet, we're if certainly, if there's only only one little starting lake like this one in the middle, we're not going to use it. Um, uh, if, <clears throat> if there if there are other lakes as well, we can use those. And potentially, if there's one little one as well, then we might be able to use those too. We might consider using those okay as well if it's in a really really convenient position. But in this case, Tristan has sort of sidestepped that potential problem by finding this lake, this here lake, um, which is not which is obviously leg perfectly legitimate to use because it's not um, it's not in the center. And so he's built up a. Um, a power generating system over here so presumably there are some water pumps somewhere or maybe he hasn't got oh no he's built stuff over this on this one here so over here we have a lake where he's pulling water out of it shoving it into into, a, into one of the big pipes the underground the, the duct systems and then passing it down here and this and here he has implemented one of um, Mark's designs this is the the, uh, the free power system where you have the greenhouses that grow the, the wood you have the um, fuel refineries that turn that wood along with some steam into methane gas uh, biomet sorry, biomethanol even along with some oxygen uh, the oxygen is produced by atmospheric condensers uh, in the bottom corners here. The steam is produced by a boiler up here, which this one appears to be an electric boiler, not running off wood, but fair enough. Uh, we probably decided that was a more sensible way to do it. So eventually what you get is you get the trees growing the wood, it gets turned into biomethanol, you burn the biomethanol in the gas power stations, and then because there are no biters on this planet, we then just blow all of the air pollution off into the atmosphere because we don't care about it. Now if we look at the pollution, yes, yeah, so we have got a, we've got actually quite a lot of pollution on this planet already. Um, but as I say, there's no biters here, so that's not a, not a problem. We can just let the planet get as polluted as it wants. Now, if we could just turn off pollution for this for the for planets that we've made completely safe, that would be quite a nice thing to do. But as far as I'm aware, you can only, pollution is an all or nothing thing. You can't just say, "Well, I'll turn it off for this planet because we know it's safe." So, never mind. We'll just we'll just leave it uh, gradually turning red like that. So yes, this is the free power system that's, that I've talked about before, and that's going to generate him enough power to get on with all the rest of the stuff that's going on on this planet. Now Tristan is a little bit paranoid, so one of the first things he's done is here he's built up a um, a, a steam battery and a uh, and, and an umbrella defence. So the idea of this is that we have an electric boiler up here that's trickling through the electricity very very slowly because it's just it's just one boiler, and that's very very gradually filling up all these tanks with steam. So as you can see, we've got about well between none and 2,000 steam in each of these tanks. But we don't have a, um, a, a coronal mass ejection expected on this planet, for certainly for a, quite a while. The next one is going to be happening on Norvis um, in 22 minutes, so I better talk quickly. Um, and that we get, we're going to see that one in the beginning of the next stream, so that's something exciting to come along for. He also seems to have missed out a, um, a turbine down there, but never mind. So, the idea is that this single tank here is going to provide a dribble of steam that's going to fill, eventually fill up these tanks, and that will give us enough power to run this umbrella defence when the um, 
when the, when the coronal mass when the inevitable coronal mass ejection hits. But until then, it's just going to trickle to fill these tanks, and we'll have that massive battery there and available. Um, yeah, the only downside of these things is that they do consume apparently consume 10 megawatts all the time. Uh, let's see if we can check that citation needed on that uh, consumption. Yeah, there we go. So we're always consuming 10 megawatts, but that's not that much compared to the 45 megawatts that the um, the, the uh, uh, what do you call it defense guns that he's got over here are using up. And these are currently getting ammunition in out of a chest here and just working. And, and they've, that's loaded them all up, so that'll keep us safe from meteorites as well. So as I say, now he's finished off all of the defensive stuff over here. It's now time to start thinking about actually getting some resources off this planet. So he's gone in. And he's ghosted. He's putting ghosts for all of the uh, the core mining drills. And our plan is that we're going to pull up core mines from all of the all of the um, mining mining seams on this moon, and then shove them all together and make something with those. What exactly we're going to make with them is is, is slightly is, is slightly interesting, and I shall talk about that in, in a moment when I when I've um, finished exhausting the rest of the things to talk about on this planet. So yes, he came over here by rocket and put down a couple of rocket landing pads, which he now appears to be mostly using as essentially as warehouses. So the idea is he can drop in here, he can drop a rocket in here when he needs more supplies, and he's now got all the stuff he thinks he's going to need. So a load of railway, some some belts, some drills, stuff like that. I don't think he's got enough belts. I don't think he's got enough drills if he's going to set much stuff up, and I don't think he's got enough rail if he's going to link everything together by rail. But never mind. The point is that he's got the landing pads in here now, so now he can request either um, manually himself by setting up a shopping list or by asking us to put stuff into a rocket for him he can then request for another rocket to come out from Norvis because over here he set up an additional rocket silo um, with a, a, a blue chest here I'm, I'm not quite sure what's, exactly what's going on with all these inserters um, I'm presuming it's, it's some sort of cunning way of loading all of the necessary bits and pieces into this into this um, into this rocket silo but he, and he's just sort of switched move rotated the inserters to deactivate them but presumably what he's going to do is set the um, set up a shopping list in here either by using a transmitter or just by by actually just simply requesting stuff and then shuffle it all around into, into the rocket silo once we've actually got a rocket built here so this is a, um, a sort of i'm not sure exactly how he's working this but the idea is that he can build up an, an additional rocket here without too much difficulty and then this will be able to launch off to um take to, to bring more stuff over to him out on um dra out on dracket to keep him supplied with all the all the bits and pieces he needs he did also mention that it takes quite a while to get the um to get the the, the uh, free power generation sort of warmed up and running and, and and ticking over properly, because these um, greenhouses take quite a long time to produce enough uh, wood to make these the, the whole system start become become properly self sufficient. And while it's doing that, you, it's sort of kind of important that you remove any um, remove the interlinks between the uh, between the, the individual blocks, because you only want one of them to be running and, and at, at a time. Because the greenhouses, as I say, take quite a lot of power, and if you're just trying to kickstart stuff solar, you're going to need a lot of solar solar panels in order to make these things happy. And if we look at the um, the power usage now, we can see we're getting in about we're getting in a whole 1.4 megawatts from the uh, from the solar panels and the greenhouses are using three and a half megawatts. So actually these solar panels would be absolutely fine for one block, but for all of the one, two, three, four, five blocks he's got set up here, that's not going to be sufficient. So it's a sort of a system you need to sort of, you need to carefully build it up over time and and, and bring it online gradually because otherwise you'll just find that um, it just it, uh, it it is not it's not particularly stable it and it take it says he says it took about 20 minutes to get to the point where there was enough wood flowing around here that the power supply was reliable but once you've got to that point they're remarkably stable you can just leave them leave them ticking over and they'll produce plenty of power for everything everything you need so his challenge next week is going to be to actually make some cryonite. So, um, that's why he's come over here. As I say, this is a cryonite planet. He's going to be doing the core mining to get some chunks out, and then he's going. To, and we've decided it's probably worth doing at least a bit of the processing on on site in order um, before we before we ship it. So if we look at cryonite, you get you get cryonite out of the core fragments. Fine. You can ship it by delivery cannon, but if you process it a bit first, then it'll become much more compact and it'll be much more efficient to ship the parts around. So instead, we'll, we'll, well, oh, uh, it's interesting, uh, it's also interesting. Right, so instead what we'll be doing is we'll be turning that into cryonite powder in a pulverizer. Fine. And then that pulp powder will be turned into crystals and water, by the looks of it. Um, now he could, he's got the option here, uh, so crystal, yeah, so cryonite powder goes into crystals, then powder and crystal and some heavy oil turns into cryonite rod. So that's going to be a bit of a sort of a, um, uh, there's going to be several steps required there, or you can or you can void it, I'm sure. But so basically, what what you what you've got to do then is you've got to make some make some crystals, and then you use some of the powder and some of the crystals you've just made in order to make your cryonite rod. So there's a bit of a sort of a, a multi-step process there, which interestingly uses the same input for both of the steps. Um, 
So that's going to be slightly more complicated than what we were used to from the previous um, from, from 0. version 0.5 of space exploration. But I don't think that's going to be too challenging. I'm sure we'll be able to have, have a supply of cryonite rods coming out sooner or later. Then 200 of those can be put into a delivery cannon capsule and shipped off to wherever we need them. So that's going to be a bit more, that's going to be a much more efficient way of doing that. Back on Norvis, uh, Tristan's also been busy here as well. Uh, so what, what's he done? He, he cleared out those last couple of biters over here that I talked about before. So that's that's been that's been tidied up nicely. Um, he has improved the ghost train a bit. So now the the ghost train. And I still need to make a specific video about this because I'm not going to try and I'm not going to try and explain this without writing myself a script first. But now the ghost train will bring back any excess stuff that isn't it wasn't needed by the build it was doing, which might be this stuff in here. But if so, I don't know why that's not being unloaded into one of these. But as I say, we, I'll need to do some investigation into this and work out how the whole thing works and make it make its own video because I think it deserves that. He's put in another. Um, <laughs> he's described this as claimed the northern core mining patch with some silly belt sharing. And if we zoom in on this, then yes, we can see what he means by the silly belt sharing. So we've got the um, the, uh, the the dirty filters that are coming around on the inside row of the belt here, and the clean filters on the outside. And then he's also outputting all of the core fragments onto the inside of the belt. And this is actually fine because the rate that the core fragments are being produced and the rate that the dirty filters are coming around are both sufficiently low that they can happily fit on the same side of the belt together. As you can see as this comes around here, there's a little bit of... It might, it might it possibly it possibly slowed down the output here a tiny bit as that filter went past, but very, 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 very slightly, insig insignificantly so. So this is not... For, so the the, uh, the drill here isn't, isn't filling up. It's outputting stuff as fast as it possibly can. And as you can see, there's still plenty of room on the belt to put more stuff on. Then when we get out off this island and back over onto the, onto the mainland, you can see he's just splitting out the um, the core fragments here and putting them onto a belt to be taken off to a station. So essentially, the uh, the filter belt is, I'm not going to say it's uninterrupted, but it carries on flowing up here in very much the same way that it comes up, the, up at this part. And any dirty filters that were coming up here will just carry on around here, and let's see if we can find one. And they will carry on along this belt like that one is and just carry on flowing all the way around the, the massive belt that goes around all the way around the outside of the factory. So that's fitted in as quite a nice extra sort of just cobbled in an extra uh, mining drill here. And it's got the three fil uh, air filters, air purifiers around it now. And those are sucking in the pollution at the same rate as being produced. Well, slightly better than the rate it's being produced. If we look at this one, it says 70. These do minus 75 a minute each. That's 150. Minus 225 being pulled out. And this creates 200 a minute. So every minute we are potentially cleaning up 25 extra pollution. So if we have a look at the map and the pollution on here, you can see that basically it's not, it's not going anywhere. Um, the... What is quite interesting is it looks like I can't quite tell where the edge of the um, yeah. So because there's actually only two filters in the in the same um, in the same chunk as where the mining drill appears to be producing its pollution, which seems to be the top one, um, that means that there's 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 um, there's actually a little bit of overspill into this chunk, and so uh, we will eventually drift down into this one as well, where it's getting quickly cleaned up, and it'll drift up into this one where it's getting quickly cleaned up. But a little bit of it is drifting this way, so it might be worth considering putting in a another um, filter in in here, air purifier in here, because that'll be in the same chunk as the as where the core mining drill is producing the pollution. But that's a fairly minor thing. I don't think that pollution is going to get very far because from here it's still going to it's going to try and spread back back this way and round, and a lot of it's going to get round into here and here. So I, I don't think that's a serious worry, but if we're looking for absolute perfection, it's not quite there because of because of the uh, the break between the chunks, which you can see by where the where the pollution is. He has also made the um, glass and silicon train slightly longer. So let's see, that's something that comes out of the out of the big smeltery area. So over here, the glass and smelt the glass and silicon trains hit that we see here were originally just one two. So only had the two wagons. He's now doubled that to a one two one two train for both of them. So that has a couple of advantages. The most obvious one is that you can transport twice as much stuff in one go, so the trains don't need to go quite as often as they did before. But the other advantage is that um, one of the output stations, and I think it was over here for the blue circuits, this station here, wasn't set up properly for only having a 1-2 station. So it was expecting more more silicon to be coming in than was capable of, of arriving. Um, and so the train when the train so when the train would stop here and it would unload into this warehouse. And for some reason, these warehouses have been set, set up with a with a limit of about this many stacks which shouldn't happen these unloading warehouses should be set up to be uh, limited by the stations um, as this one is now so it's not putting in any more than that and it's gradually trickling out and it's not it's not calling for another train because there's still but because there's still more in here than it, than, than, than the limit so eventually then uh, when the next time a train comes out it will be able to arrive and unload properly so all, all, all should be well I say all should be well we seem to be running out of um, out of copper again is there a copper train on its way 
there there are, there are a couple of copper trains moving around so probably one of these is on its way here um probably this one actually is on its is on its way over here so that that'll sort that out um, so yes, that means next time, next time a silicon train comes over here to, to do a drop off, it'll fill up all four of the warehouses, and we'll have a bit more stuff available. <clears throat> now, possibly I should set up some cunning systems to ensure that these warehouses are kept in balance, but to an extent I don't really care because there is enough buffer space in the warehouses, and we're using the silicon up sufficiently slowly that it's not a serious problem. And here, this train has arrived. It's now unloading the copper here. It it's a little bit late because there is a gap in the copper production, so the green circuit production has more or less stopped. But it's not enough of a gap for me to worry about it significantly. I could come in over here and I could change some of the numbers here. So I could change this to this this number. I don't know whether that needs to go up or down, but it needs to be. I could change that, and then the, then we'd bring in more. Um, I think. Yes, I would increase that number because that's the amount we want to have. Um, so I could increase that number and then the trains would come a bit more frequently, assuming there is enough copper available, which there probably is. I'm not sure. But this has probably only happened because we've, we've suddenly used up a load of, of, of green, uh, sorry, red and blue circuits. And so it's just trying to refill the buffers. So once it's done that, things will calm down a bit and we should be all right again. We, did, we discovered another... Uh, my relatively minor issue that over where is where is the filtration system here we had a problem where the um we were always putting new filters so over here we are somewhere yeah over here we are building up the uh, the clean filters to be used for all of the air purification they're being fed down a belt here and they were originally being fed straight into the station over here where they would be loaded into the um into a train to take off and and uh, and 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 filter areas that are outside the massive belt of doom um, and then this would bring back the dirty filters that would flow up here to be cleaned out um, the problem with that is then up here we have the dirty filters being cleaned and then passed out into the system to go around the massive belt of doom um, and then the dirty filters come back in and most of the filters will make it all the way around and will come back in and will come back in here um, and we'll, sorry, we'll, be, we'll be cleaned out and reused so that meant that the number that were up in here was going up and up because we we're taking them from from the factory for the train and then and then redoing it so what Tristan's done down here is some sort of weirdness right a uh, some sort of very weirdness. Right, okay, I see what he's done here. So, so the the filters are coming in along here, and they're then, um, but yeah, they're they're being, but they are being passed through there and up this way to go round round the big systems. But then the ones that come out of the cleaning system are being fed down here, going out on this belt, and then going out on this, and then coming back down here on this belt. And this this means that they will then be passed through here on through his underground belt, and then up here where they're put onto the side bottom side of this belt. And that then comes around here, and then because this is a priority set here, it will choose the ones that are coming out of here before the ones that are coming along here. So we'll reuse these until they, until we finally manage to use them all up. And then once we start to actually run out, then we'll pull in more from this belt. So it's um it's a little bit convoluted, and we probably could have come up with a better system with a bit of effort. But this is actually this is probably going to work pretty nicely. I think uh, we should have a nice we, this this no this this will work. It, it, there's nothing wrong with it. It will work. Um, but it's just a little bit, it's slightly weird design and not quite how I'd have done it. But but yeah, I mean that's that's the that's what you get when you play multiplayer, isn't it? People do design things in slightly different ways, so you see different versions of the same sort of idea. Then up here we've got two chests to store all of those excess filters and three chests to store all of the, all of those excess filters because before we realised we had a massive backlog. There were clean filters clogging up all the way up here. We weren't washing out any of the dirty filters, and they were backlogging up here as well. And it was just it was just all horrible and needed fixing. So here we've got the the massive belt that goes all the way around the factory, and that also is being being fed out of this this chest here. And as you can see, what what the way this works is that the filters will get passed around here, and then as they come down here, if there's a gap in them, we'll get more filters that are coming in from the factory, the brand new ones. But as long as there's some coming through from here and there's some in this chest, we'll find that this will just carry on flowing. Um, I'm not sure what's going on here. What are you doing? You are you are reading presumably? Yes. Oh no, no, you're enabling or disabling. Okay. So this will only only pass the filters through round this way if this is empty. Um, I don't think, again, I don't think that matters. I don't think it makes a difference to how the system's going to work. Sorry, only pass them around if this isn't close to empty. I don't think this matters um, because this belt, if, if it wasn't there, then we just have them flow up. The, yeah, we'd always have them flow up here and out this way to, to, to feed this belt and always just have them flow straight through, straight through here to feed the train. So I don't think that's actually necessary, but... Sure, it's not going to harm anything. I, I, I don't have a problem with that being there. <laughs> okay, so that covers all of Tristan's doings. Um, now, one the big thing I did, I feel like, uh, I, I feel like the um, 
the biggest thing I did was I came back from Norvis orbit. So I'm now back down here on Norvis, on back back down on the home planet, because I sort of ran out of things to do up in space, which is a weird, which feels a bit weird given what space exploration is normally like. There's normally enormous quantities of everything to do, but because of the changes that have been made in 0.6. Um, I actually needed to come back down. Well, I ran out of, as I say, I ran out of things I could do. So up here in space, uh, turn on the lights. Um, right, I, I made I made a few tweaks. So there, there were a few things I wanted to do while I was up here. Uh, the first and most important was actually to link up all of these warehouses down here with red cables because I, I'd missed a couple out, and therefore um, there was an excess of some some of the things, some of the resources we need being brought up. That was a bit of an oops. For some reason, there's a, a piece of iron has made, a piece of steel has made its way through to there. I don't know how, but that's going to need to be cleaned up at some point. Not serious though. Up here, I fixed a filter. Though on this on this filter here, I was accidentally outputting steel as well, which could have ha happily didn't lead to a crisis, but could have done if I wasn't careful. Um, that was yeah, could, could could have been a major problem. But yeah, I got that got that sorted out before anything serious happened. Um, I've sorted the ice mine belt that comes around the top here. That was a, that, that was <laughs> because because I come in here, I put down the I'd, I'd, I'd built all of the stuff up here. I put in put in all the mining drills and all of the um, and all, all of the belts that, that I could. But unfortunately, I needed to put down some scaffolding because there wasn't there wasn't any there. And so those were still ghosts when I put the belt when I tried to put the belts in. So I couldn't put them in. So I missed them out. But I've gone back and fixed that now because uh, somebody pointed out in the in, in the last video. Thank you very much for that. I've removed the belt over here that was bringing in water barrels because we don't need those anymore. I've moved the belt production. Uh, where's belt production? Here, here is belt production. I've moved it up a bit, and I've also improved it a bit. So previously there was a bit of a problem. All this was coming all the way down to about here, and that meant it was sort of encroaching a bit on the area of the bus. It was making it difficult to run belts through and things like that. So I thought, let's move it all up a little bit out to get it out of the way. Um, I also moved this into this um, assembly machine up over to here in order to get that up and out of the way so it could have this, so, um, again, for the same same reason. The most important thing I've done here is to move the splitter production all the way up to here and give it its own belt making machine to run off. And that means that down here, this uh, the underground belts are only, and, are, and and well actually also and and the loaders but I don't need very many loaders so that's less of a problem but the underground belts are basically the only thing running off this uh, off this where off this assembly machine I should might, maybe I'll fix fix that remove that and stop that being in a um, uh, being a, a, a provider chest at some point as well I don't know we'll see how it goes but this was because I was having a massive shortage of the underground belts because they were all go they were all they were we weren't making the belts the, the normal belts fast enough to make the underground belts fast enough to, to to keep up with the rate I was trying to expand the bus out at. And so that's meant that, um, having done this, I've now got a bit of a stockpile of it in here of 59 of them. I'm not sure that 59 is going to be enough. I'm, uh, especially, it's, oh, it's trying to go up to 200. 200 probably is enough. Um, so yeah, we, and then we've got more machines making belts as well. So this, this one is just for splitters. This one is just for science. This one is just for actually using as, as belts, as is this one. And this one is just for underground and actually for using as belts, which I think, is, as I said, is a mistake. So I, should, I might change that. And also for the loaders as well. So... Yeah, it's 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 certainly better now. Um, I might consider moving the loader production up to here as well, just to get it off this one. So, it's, so this one is literally just doing underground belts. I'll see how it goes though, because that's going to be a relatively easy fix to make. Uh, it just extends. It'll just extend this out a little bit further, and yeah. So if it's needed, I shall do it. Now, what you might have noticed is that despite this being intending to try and have 200, it has stopped. And that is because, once again, we've run out of steel. Um, that is a mic problem, so we'll talk about that. In, or possibly it's a rocket problem. We'll, we'll, so we'll talk about that in a little, little, in a little while. Um, possibly in tomorrow's video. But at the moment, yeah, the steel, the, the lack of steel up here is, is being an ongoing problem. Um, but Mike has been working on that, as I shall touch on in a few, in, in, in a few moments. In, in, actually, no, not in a few moments, in tomorrow's video. That has also caused the science production to grind to a halt because that requires the belts, which requires the steel, and so yeah, we're not we're not doing any science at the moment. That said, we have done quite a lot since the last video. Uh, if we have a look down here, we've got um, where where are the ones that actually require this? So we've got we've got we managed to get um, space capsule navigation done. That was done last time, I think, as probably was industrial furnace. But we've now got cryonite processing, vulcanite processing, ice processing, pyroflux smelting. Biochem processing, various sciencey things, uh, space manufacturers, plasma generators, uh, more science, more science, log better logistics. So we've got blue belts now. It's interesting. We might have to start making those. Automation three, quarry mineral extraction, and artillery and better weaponry and and production science packs. So we've made some big advances here, and a lot of this is stuff that's going to go into in, into the science. So um, let's. Carry, I'll carry on a little bit further, and I'll come back to that because it's, it's relevant to why I came back down to Norvis with a bump. 
So uh, we've got this, still got still got the biochem facility, sorry, decontamination facility here, producing the uh, cosmic water. Great. I've now wired in the uh, the belts down here, so we've got the glass supply and the copper supply coming in. So we are making the uh, the belts and the underground belts, except once again we've run out of steel. There's a, a bit of a recurring theme here, you'll see. Over here we are continue we are making the um, uh, scaffolding. We've got two thousand of that. That seems to be the number I've decided. Oh no, we're trying to make four thousand. Why have you stopped? You've stopped because you've stopped. Okay, there must be another 2,000 in storage somewhere. Possibly over here? Okay, now I'm I'm puzzled. Why? What? So we do have 2,000 in storage. Oh, oh, there's a... No, that's something different. There's probably 2,000 in a, in a blue chest over here somewhere from when I uh, when I ripped up this machine. Because this used to be over here in this gap. So once again, as part of my not wanting to have things too close to the bus strategy, I've moved the... Um, the uh, space manufacturing from here over to here in order to make the um, in order to make the uh, scaffolding. So that's uh, now it's now a little bit more in a slightly more sensible place. So also, if I need more of this in the future, I can put in a second one and a third one and a fourth one above here, so we can make it a bit faster. Um, in the previous run, I was making all of this on Norvus and shipping it up in the rocket, but we can't do that anymore because Space Exploration 0.6 requires you to make all of the space stuff, or at least most of the space stuff. I think you can make the space manufacture, space assembly machines down there, but everything else has to be made up here in space. So, on that, along those terms, we're making the, um, these, these are the decontamination facilities. <clears throat> so here we've got the two different buildings. You see the decontamination facility is pulling in the dirty um, life support canisters I've been, I've been using. So all of my, uh, the things that have been catching all of my breath, <coughs> it's watch, washing them out with cosmic water. And that's producing polluted cosmic water, uh, contaminated cosmic water and contaminated biosludge. So the reason I've done this, rather than just using two life support facilities, is that having these things will be useful soon when I start to need bio sludge in order to make the um, in order to start doing methane processing, which is something I would like to do in the in the not too distant future. But this means up here we are now cleaning out these canisters, sorry, cleaning out the canisters and then refilling them using the water and the and the coal in the same recipe as doing down on the ground and chucking them in a in a passive provider chest. I did have a bit of a, a brain fail when I was trying to get this up and working because I thought that these machines couldn't be put on the space station. But it turns out they can, so that's absolutely fine. But if they couldn't have been, then things would have been a lot more difficult. Um, life. Yeah, so, so make, cleaning out the life support canisters, there are a couple of ways you can do that. You can do that on the ground, which just takes water. Or you can do it in space. Sorry, you can, no, you can do it anyway. You can do it in a life support facility, which just takes water. Or you can do the slightly more complicated one, which uses a smaller amount of cosmic water, so it's probably cheaper in resources. And that kicks out the contaminated cosmic water and the contaminated bio sludge, which, as I said, I think are going to possibly be useful for getting byproducts, useful byproducts out of them. Once you've got those, you then get, have the empty, empty life support canisters, and you can do the life support facility recipe, which is coal and 100 water. Makes you a life support canister. Uh, or you can do it with fish instead of fish and wood instead of coal, but that's a bit weird. <clears throat> Alternatively, if you you can do the uh, Christmas tree recipe, and sorry, you can you can do the Christmas tree tech, and you can then do the life support facility recipe, which takes in biomass and cosmic water. So this is again is going to be more efficient because it's only ten cosmic water as opposed to a hundred normal water, um, and making the cosmic water takes. How do we make cosmic? How do you make cosmic water? 99 water and one lubricant. Oh, actually, no, it's not cheaper. Never mind, I take that back. The, uh, the cosmic water is more expensive than I thought it was. So these recipes are not cheaper versions, but they do produce interesting um, interesting byproducts. So this this one is probably not going, never going to be better because biomass is going to be much harder to get hold of than coal. It uses the same amount of water and it just turns a life support canister into a an empty life support canister into a new life support canister. So this means as long as I don't run out of coal up here, then I can these life support canisters will keep me alive forever. So that's great. I can stay in orbit for as long as I like without really having to worry about um, without resources and, and, and staying safe. Finally, I think yes, finally up in up in orbit. I uh, put in this rocket silo down here. So this is gradually collecting the bits and pieces that come out of the... So when, when we bring rockets up here, we're full of resources. The resources all trickle through, as I've described before. So we've got them, we've got them being sorted. So the, the circuits and the motors are in this one, science in this one, raw, res raw resources in here and here, and so, on, and so on, just all the way down there, so they can be fed and out onto the bus nicely. Um, what we've got, then we've got all, because of that, because because we're launching rockets, as you do, we're ending up with lots and lots of rocket parts here. So what I'm doing here is I'm passing them down. Those go into here. We're passing them around. We're, the rockets, rocket parts are being put out onto this belt and flowing around here, where they will then be put into here as long as there isn't a rocket ready. So as you can see, we've got 84% of the rocket built. 
Then, when there's an excess, when the rocket has been built, this will turn off, but this one will turn on. So we'll then start packing the rocket sections, um, as has already been happening a bit here. So these actually shouldn't shouldn't be in here yet, but you know, I built the thing up in stages, so it's it's just a little bit funny. Uh, we're then also we're feeding out any stacked rocket cargo rocket sections that were in here. I don't know why we'd have stacked rocket sections in here, but just in case there were any, and also uh, rocket capsules will be passed out into here through through bounce into this store, uh, stockpile briefly in this chest and then put into the rocket. The rocket will fill up with all of this uh, rocket related stuff and then once it's full if we will I will set this eventually to fly back down to Norvis where we'll unload we'll start and then we can reuse all of these rocket uh, sections and the and the capsules so that that way we'll have a nice loop of the things going around. Yes we'll have to put in a few more rocket sections into the system down at the bottom because we don't have particularly good rocket reuse yet in fact we have a look at the numbers we will see that we have a reusability of 24%. Um, so, 24 plus and minus up to... Oh, yeah, 20, so 24% of our rocket parts are being reused at the moment, which is fairly terrible, um, and is going to be rather rather wasteful in rocket parts for the time being. But we're going to move away from rockets as soon as we can, so we're not, I'm not too worried about that, but we'll see how we'll see how it goes and how much we, how upset we get about it. Uh, we've got we've got the the loss percentages are relatively low because at the moment because we're only flying from Norvis to Norbit. The longer range runs are going to be a little bit scarier, but we're not going to do too many of those, especially as we're just exploring um, Norvis's moons at the moment. So yes, that's everything I got up to up here on uh, in in Norbit. So down on Norvis, let's turn on the lights once again. I can't remember, I thought I'd already done that, but apparently I hadn't. Yes, down here. The reason I came back down to Norvis was because I started thinking about production science, and production science is a, a, a whole thing, should we say. So in order to make a production science pack, you need productivity modules one. Now they're just made from electronic components, uh, electronic circuits, electronic components and glass. And we're making them down here on Norvis in a quantity. They're being currently being made here in relatively small quantities, but being made in order to make the, the tier two ones. So I've collected 50 of them in this um, in this chest down here, and that is a red chest, provider chest. So that means I was then able to set up a request on the on, on the rocket system over here, so they'll get brought over, put into this uh, rep requester chest here, and then automatically loaded into the rocket. So we can, if we scroll down to the bottom, probably yes, we can see we, we've got in a hundred uh, of, of those modules here. So productivity modules, not too much of a problem. Similarly, the Uranium-238, not a problem, I put it onto the shopping list and we now have some Uranium-238 in the rocket, so the next time the rocket launches, we'll have some of that. Fine, this is going this is going quite well so far. I've, I have deliberately skipped the ironing good. Then we got to Vulcanite block, that's a problem because we don't have any, well, we have a little bit of Vulcan that we've harvested from, uh, from the crashed spaceships. Um, I don't really want to start just using that unless there was, if there was one particular research I needed in order to get me off to get, get things up and running nicely, then sure, I'd, I'd, I'd be okay with using it for that. But in general, I want to have an, I want to have a supply of Vulcanite available. So I'm, I'm, I've been thinking about flying off to a Vulcanite planet in order to get some of that. Machine learning data. Well, that takes green circuits, which we've got. It takes bl um, blank data cards, which we haven't got. Blank data cards require red circuits, got those up there, copper plates, sure, and polished data storage substrates. Okay, so that's another thing we don't have. So look in here, that's a rough data storage substrate, substrate which we don't have, and cosmic water, which we do have, and this has to be done in space in a in a uh, decontamination facility. The rough data storage substrates come from glass, silicon, iron plates, and they can be made anywhere, and we have all of these things. So what I've done is I've built a small town up here, which brings in um, silicon, glass, and iron plates, presumably. Um, yes, yeah, so yeah, brings in silicon, glass, and iron plates. Uh, we've run out of iron because Mike's been messing around with that and fixing things. But then that's all passed up here into this system, where it then gets processed down, turned into the um, turned into the, into the data sort of storage substrates that we need, uh, which then get output onto this belt with quite a lot of scrap so every so for every two of two two rough data storage substrates we make we're going to produce one scrap on on average at least um so they get fed off down a belt here and we, we are merging so we've got the way i've got this work set up is i i built a small proof of concept area that was about yay much it worked so i then made a second copy of it here i then made additional copies here here, 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 here. So we've now got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times what I was trying to produce originally. Except there's a massive pylon right in the middle of here, so that should probably be moved somewhere else and and, and the assembly machine put in there. But we, I, I can fix that at, at any point. There's enough coming through at this point anyway, um, because we're not using any. So you know, <laughs> that then flows down the belt here, uh, down 
in down 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 in towards the factory. We're splitting off the uh, the scrap here, which is taking being taken away to be dealt with. Somebody made a scrap processing facility, and I haven't noticed that. Uh, I think Trist I think it might have been Tristan. I'm not quite sure. We'll talk about that in a moment. But then these just flow down here, and they go straight into the side of the rocket with very much the traditional loading system over here, where we have a belt here that's watching for fewer than less than 100 on the signal network. If there's less than 100, it'll flow. They'll be passed through into the rocket, and as such, we now have lots and lots of these um, substrates down here, and that's working nicely. Um, it's connected to this belt, to this belt, to this pylon. These belts are just working as a sort of pass-through. So if I click on these, you'll notice they're not actually doing anything. It's just allowing the belt to be brought over there without me using more pylons. Um, because... I couldn't link it up to this pylon because we've got the signal coming out of the ship onto this pylon, then over here, and then through here where we're um, we're, we're blocking this. Yeah, the signal the signal that comes across here on this red cable is the one that's then blocked until we have an. In, uh, no, it's not. Is the one that allows us to unblock the signal that's coming out of here. So when we have the signal that's coming out of here, we're blocked until the rocket is finished, and that means none of these belts will flow, passing anything through to go into the rocket until there is a um, and until there is a full rocket there and that ensures we get around the problem of not being able to build an entire rocket now apparently in the new version of space exploration that came out during last week and we haven't updated to although by the time you see this video we might well have done um, it's now got a system where it locks the first two um, uh, things in the in the in the in the rocket to be only cargo rocket sections and only uh, space capsules until the rocket has been completed, which ensures you don't have you don't run into the problem that I've had in the past where. You, you fill up the cargo section of, of the rocket to such an extent that you can't put in the bits and pieces that are needed to make the rocket. So we need to be careful about that, and this system allows us to be, care be careful about that. But also, the fix that's been made in the latest version <laughs> means that the game is automatically careful about it for us. Okay, so that's that's the substrate. Where was I? Uh, so that was that was in order to make the machine and blah 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 blah. That so now we've got the rough data substrates. We've got the cosmic water. Good. So that allows us to make the polished data substrates in space because we've got the advanced circuits and the copper being shipped up there. Now, if I know anything from my previous runs, it's that what we're doing on the bus is not going to be sufficient for this. But that's okay. The bus is only a temporary thing until we can until we can get the space trains and start doing a proper town-based system. Uh, so, then what's got that? We've got the electronic circuit up there. We'll have the blank data cards. Fine. We also need thermofluid. Thermofluid is cool thermofluid is made from warm thermofluid fine we need we'll need some radiators up there to make those but that's that's okay but in order to make the thermofluid we need sulfur which we've got iron plates which we've got copper plates which we've got heavy oil now heavy oil we don't have um and uh, and chemical gel we don't we don't have chemical gel is made from cosmic water which we do have and petroleum gas which we don't have so this puts us in a rather awkward position. In order to get the um, in order to get the production science flowing, we need the thermofluid, and in order to get that, we need both heavy oil and petroleum gas. Now there are a few barrels of heavy oil up in space at the moment, and since um, thermofluid doesn't really get destroyed very much, you lose a little bit of it when you um, when you chill it down to be the, the, this the, uh, in this one. And we haven't got we probably haven't got no we haven't got the better recipes to do it more efficiently yet. So we are going to lose two percent each time we recool it, but that's not very very much. So the amount of um, the amount of heavy oil we've got in the in the free barrels we got up in space is probably going to be enough to make a decent chunk of thermofluid. The problem is that we also need the petroleum gas to make the to make the chemical gel to make the, again make the thermo thermofluid. Now we can get a bit of that by cracking the heavy oil that we have up in space, but this is getting to the point where I'm starting to worry that we're going to run out of it, or we're going to have things in the wrong pro proportions. So what I want to do is get methane processing up and done, and I believe we've researched that. Because we we have two possible two two choices at this point. No, we have th we have three choices at this point. I'll come in again. Um, so you can what we can do is we could we, we could do the same thing as we've done here, where we're bringing in barrels, we're putting and we're putting fluids into barrels. So we could we could find a way to get petroleum gas and heavy oil over to here. The problem is we don't have heavy oil or, or or petroleum gas anywhere on the bus. The only place where we have heavy oil and petroleum gas is in big oil over here. So getting this from here, either as a, if we, we we could bring it onto the bus as a fluid, have more fluids flowing down the bus, but for something that's going to be so temporary and so ugly that seems like an enormous waste we could do a bit of barreling over here and and um potentially and then have the barrels be shipped shipped over but again exact just as wasteful and, and possibly and probably even more of a headache to do so what i think we're probably going to end up doing is doing a little bit of barreling over here man and do it do it all hand fed and manual so we've got like a hundred barrels of each then bring them over by hand chuck them in the rocket 
um, and then go up and process those into into the and empty the barrels out do all the fluid processing up there that we want to do in order to get the, the things we need for the uh, chemical gel and for the and therefore for the thermofluid so we'll do all of that up in space but as a bit of a one-off because the plan is then to move on to methane processing so you can make you can get you can you, we can find methane ice out out there in on one of the um uh, distant asteroid belts and methane ice processing is something we can actually start researching now so i might add yeah i can add that to the list we can start researching methane ice processing because we've got um and, and that will then allow us to, we, we can then turn the methane ice we can ship the methane ice we can turn that into methane gas then as long as we've got some bio sludge we are going to get through a bit of bio sludge here so we're going to have to think about how to make more bio sludge um which is done through biomatter and cosmic water so that might be a, might be a way to do it um or contaminated bio sludge that's the one we've got a little bit off from the life support cans um or from biomass which we might get later so i think in the short term we're going to use the um we're going to use the bio yeah we're going we're going to make so we can we can make it out of wood we can make it out of raw fish or we can make it out of um, out of biomatter at the moment and let's see so that's making 20 cosmic water to make one 10 cosmic water to make 10 right so 20 cosmic water to make one so fish is actually going to be the best way to do this and conveniently mike did a, went on went on a massive fishing expedition recently so we have we actually do have quite a lot of fish so i might i might do the fish fish biomatter uh, bio sludge recipe and that will then allow us to get um the bio sludge to turn the methane gas into um into crude oil we can turn the contaminated bio sludge and this bio sludge that can be wrapped round back into here so it's going to be a little bit lossy presume probably about 10 percent of the bio sludge is going to be lost each time so it's we're going to need to continue to produce it but this will allow us to get a supply of crude oil which we can then process we can then process this down into 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 the petroleum gas and into heavy oil light oil petroleum gas in the normal way and that'll get us the the supplies we need the other possibility is to use coal liquefaction so we'd transport enormous quantities of coal up into space in the rocket and then turn that into oil but i think the methane gas method is going to be certainly a bit more interesting because i didn't really do that last time i did the coal i went for the coal liquefaction on a massive scale so I think I'd like to go for this. I'd like to go for the methane route because it's different and therefore more interesting. If it turns out to be a massive headache, I may change. I reserve the right to change my mind on that, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, oops, didn't mean to close that. So that's getting. We're getting quite a long way through the production science at this point. We've got. So we said productivity modules, uranium are, are fine. They're done. Vulcanite, we need to go and get. Machine learning data, that's the one that's going to require all of the oil handling and those data, data, data substrates, I said. Um, and quite a lot of processing of everything up in space. Finally, we need plasma stream. And that needs lithium and chemical gel. So chemical gel we just discussed, that's the cosmic water and petroleum gas. So it's going to be another reason to be getting through petroleum gas in quite large quantities as well, by the looks of it. So we're going to need lithium. Now, lithium is not a thing that we had. Uh, so lithium is, lithium is produced in a rather complicated way. Rather than talk you through it on FN, in FNEI, I'm going to show you what, what, I've, um, what I've put together as a, um, as a proof of concept. Um, and the reason this is over here is, uh, I shall touch on in a moment, but the reason it's only small and proof of concept -y is because I'm waiting for this copper patch to run out so that I can use this area for all of the stations to bring in the resources for it. And there aren't too many resources required, but what we need to do is we bring in stone here we crush the stone into into sand boom sand like that uh, sand comes out of here and then here we are we are producing um hydrogen and hy hydrogen and oxygen by electrolyzing water I'm sure we'll talk about that in a moment um but we're bringing the sand up here and we're using here we're using the recipe that turns sand and water into uh, chlorine and hydrogen great and then the recipe here that turns chlorine and hydrogen into hydrogen chloride and conveniently these are the same ratio so it's 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 one to one to one coming out there. It's twenty to twenty, but that's one to one. And over here, it's fifty to fifty. So again, one to one. So these produce the chlorine in, and, and the hydrogen in the correct ratios for this to, for these to use it up, and 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 and, and this will all be nice and tidy. Then up here, we we produce we we do the uh, this this processing step, which is where we bring in some mineral water. So we finally found a, a use for mineral water. All that stuff we've been stockpiling and then just dumping off into atmosphere and the hydrogen chloride and that will make some lithium chloride which we can then bring up here into these electrolyzers which will turn the lithium chloride and some more water into actual lithium and some chlorine so we've got a byproduct of chlorine here which is unhelpful so i've got a pipe taking the chlorine bringing it back all the way down here round and back back down here to go back into this system here where we are using the chlor uh, to, to, to merge it, sorry, back into this pipe here where the chlorine is then being combined with the hydrogen to be made into the hydrogen chloride. But as you'll remember, this process produces the same proportion of hydrogen and chlorine 
uh, and, and as this one uses up. So if we put in some extra chlorine, we're going to run into a problem. So I put in a tank here to collect that. And then there's an, another machine down here that takes in water and electrolyzes it to produce oxygen and hydrogen. Great. So we can now top up the hydrogen. We've got a bit of extra hydrogen coming in here that we can pass up through up through here and that will allow us to top top that up so the, the so the chlorine that's coming back round here can be combined with the hydrogen that's coming from here to make more hydrogen chloride great and these pumps down here will make sure that the machine that these uh, that these machines run at the right times in order to keep a sensible amount of chlorine in here and make sure everything stays balanced that means we now have an, a byproduct of oxygen. Now, oxygen is something you, you feel like I could just vent that to vent, vent that to atmosphere; it'd be fine. And to be honest, it probably would, even if it did pollute, which it shouldn't, because you know it's oxygen. Um, it would be then just be cleaned up by all of the um, by all of the, these these air purifiers down here. But I don't like being wasteful. So what the reason I've built it over here, as opposed to just making a new town somewhere completely separate, is because just up here we have the rocket fuel production from big oil, and that requires massive quantities of oxygen so you can see we've got all of these oxygen um, generation facilities across here make it oh going over here where we're making then making solid rocket fuel out of um, out out of oil so my theory is if I if I build up a large area that's making the lithium because I think this is going to take quite a lot of these machines it may well come all the way across to here we shall see I can then pump that but any then and then any oxygen any spare oxygen that's made can just be passed out of here and put into this pipe and we'll have a pump in here and a storage tank and so on to make sure that we use use the overspill from the lithium first that will then mean that that oxygen will go into making the rocket fuel and it won't be wasted now sure there are there are a number of things I could have done to simplify this I could have just blown off the excess chlorine into into atmosphere vent to atmosphere then but then the entire base would have started to smell like a swimming pool and nobody really wants that I could have blown off the oxygen into the, into into atmosphere and just gone oh, I don't care it's only a small amount of oxygen but these things take quite a lot of power and it feels wasteful so I thought it'd be much much nicer to actually just come down here and go yes we'll use this oxygen we'll pump it out we'll pass it out into this system over here where it could be used up sensibly and will and, and, and not wasted so that is eventually going to produce lithium from an input of quite a lot of water which is going to come out of the pump here that's 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 fine water water is easy uh, there's going to be stone coming in on the stations over here and dumped into the into, into this crusher to, to make the stone that we need I'm one of these might be enough which we'll find out later there's going and there's going to be uh, mineral water being brought in on another train and that'll be fl that'll flow into whichever one of these pipes is I think it's this one um, so that'll come in there and we can pass that in and make it to make the no not there that's that that pipe is for the that pipe is there for is, is for the um, is for the chlorine no for the hydrogen uh, coming in here that will be the that will be the uh, the mineral water input and then so we'll have a station here that drops off stone, station that drops off mineral water, and a station that takes away lithium. And that's why I need a decent amount of this space here to make all those, add all of those stations in, and why I'd like this this mining patch to be, this patch to be mined up as soon as possible. Now, as we go over here, if we look at the drills, you can see that these have all been upgraded to the Mark II mining drills. So they're running a bit faster, and they've all been filled up with speed modules. So we are pulling the uh, the copper out of the ground here as fast as we possibly can. The patch is getting gradually smaller. We've got a number of red drills around the edge that have run out of copper that they can dig up. So it's just a few in the middle. And we're now down to um, a mere 55,000 copper there. And this was at about 200,000, I think, when, I, when we started trying to empty it. So we're most of the way there. So that means fairly early on in the next stream, we're going to be able to clip. We'll get that, that, that'll be emptied. I can manually make sure this, this station is completely emptied by bringing a train over and manually uh, get, all of, get all the copper out of here, rip the whole thing up, and put in stations to, to deal with this lithium plant. So that's going to be... That's been a... It's not been a big job. It's just taken quite a long time because I'm having to wait for this to work, and I've been so I've been able to drop this in as a sort of a proof of concept, design the thing up, but not really get it running properly. So it's a little bit, a little bit disappointing, but we're getting there, and that will finally be the last thing we need in order to get the plasma stream up and running. So I'm really looking forward to actually getting this going, um, because there's been so much, built, so many different things that we needed towards that. In fact, it's not even the final thing because we're also going to need iron ingots. And you can only make iron ingots by doing the um, the, the pyroflux-based smelting. So you make you make iron ingots from molten iron. You make molten iron from pyroflux and enriched iron. So this isn't go we're not going to actually have the um, the iron ingots up and running until Mike has gone through and upgraded the iron processing to do it the the pyroflux way. But that is something I shall talk about in tomorrow's video. I think I've gone on for quite long enough now. Uh, this is all, this, this this recording is almost now along. Now, sure, I'm going to trim little bits of it out, out of it here and there, but I don't think there's very much to go. This is going to be a very very long video. Um, 
So uh, yes, the last thing to say is that I had a little bit of thought about where I want to go out for a for a um, uh, for a, a Vulcanite planet in order to get that up and running. But I think I'm just going to talk about that next week because I haven't gone I haven't gone out there. I haven't done anything relevant with that. So it's something that just hasn't happened yet. I'll go out and build that up uh, later. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video, even if it's been slightly longer than they norm than I norm than I normally try to target them uh, them to, uh, target them with with them. Um, but there's there's been there's been a lot to say because those productivity those production science packs are an enormous quantity of well, they're in they're an enorm in in, in and they are an enormity. They take so many new dif new different things that we haven't started producing yet that it's just it, it's a bit crazy. But it's going to be interesting and, and, and probably good fun trying to get all of that up and running. Uh, so we'll um, we'll see how that gets on uh, in a in a future a future episode. Um, tomorrow we'll I'll come back and talk about what Mark and Mike have been doing. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed that. You'll come back tomorrow for for the other video and um, on th uh, Sunday for the Dyson Sphere program video. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do, please do so because it does it's enormously useful for helping get my videos out to more people who would like to see them. The more people who are subscribed, the better YouTube think I'm doing, and the more they uh, and the more they push my stuff. So that would be great if you can do that. Um, the streams, the stream will be on mon Monday again with, at uh, 7:30 UK time, when we shall be going out and play and continuing with uh, continuing with space exploration. And I'll be doing a Dyson Sphere program stream on Wednesday. I think I'm getting into the reasonably sort of late mid game, maybe early late game at this point, because this is because uh, I've got most of the science done, most of the, most of the science packs being made in that. There's also GTA videos coming back out again now on Thursdays. Those are a lot of fun. They're a very different feel to the rest of the stuff on the channel, and they're a bit more action-packed. But they can, they can be quite tense and quite exciting, so please check those out. You even get to see those a week early if you're a channel supporter. Finally, as, as always, please check out the uh, the channel sponsor. That's trefoil.be. If you go to trefoil.be slash lawrenceplays and use the code lawrenceplays on checkout, you can get uh, your first month free. They, host, they'll, they, they run hosting services for... Um, for game game servers so you can get a factorio server like the one we're using for this game you can get minecraft ones from them you can get uh seven days to die mindustry all the other things you can see on screen at the moment that i can't remember off the top of my head <laughs> they're also running an additional competition at the moment through october as a halloween special if you can go through their website and find the uh i think it's 10 spooky things on the website when you click on them you get a pop-up that tell gives you a letter if you find all of those and make a word or a code out of them when if you submit that you're entered into the draw to get an additional three months free so if you go on there and do all of that you could potentially get the first month first of four months of, the, of, of their service for absolutely free so i think that's very worth trying um i recommend you go over there and check them out their servers seem to work very nicely for us and um Yes, I think that's all I have to say to you now, so thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you next time, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Bye-bye.